Good morning and welcome to Community Church. It's great to have you with us from wherever you are joining us across the world. We're going to have a time of worship, time into the word, but first let me pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just come to you this morning, Lord. We come to worship and honour you. Lord, I pray that you will prepare our hearts to hear and listen to what you've got to speak to us today. Bless us this uh, festive nativity period, Lord, and I pray that we remember the reason for the season. In your name, Amen.
During the next worship song, we will have an opportunity for you to give to the work of the Lord through Community Church. Uh, as we uh, take this next song, there will be a QR code on the screen. Uh, please just scan that in and uh, give your offering to the Lord and it will go towards the work of the church in the local community and into the nations. God bless you as you give to the Lord just now.
morning and welcome again to Community Church. We're on our third week of our Advent series on God with us and this week we're going to be looking at God with us, the mystery. And just take you back, you probably recognize this scene. 2,000 years ago, Bethlehem, Joseph and Mary are in on their way to a sleepy town in the middle of the night. Mary's heavily pregnant, Joseph's running around trying to find a room for Mary to give birth. Desperately, he begs and goes to different doors. He knocks on people's doors saying, please let me in. I just need somewhere for my wife to give birth. Despite that, nowhere to be found. An innkeeper reluctantly makes room in a tumble down stable with the cows. That's just one problem with this. This isn't what the Bible teaches us. The true story has been choked by myth, stories, plays, movies, dramatized for the sake of entertainment. But the birth of Jesus, the real account is slightly different. Here's what Luke tells us. Luke 2 verses 1 to 8. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration where Quinius was governor in Syria. All went to be registered, each in his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, Nazareth to Judah, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was one, he was of the house and the lineage of David to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her first son and wrapped him in the swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. You notice what's missing. You can see this map and it's one over a day to walk uh, to Bethlehem. Now, there's no urgency. Joseph wouldn't have taken a ready to deliver baby, uh, ready to deliver Mary in such a arduous journey. Instead, it was while they were there, the days were completed for, and this was for to Jesus to be born. In other words, they stayed a while. Also, there was no begrudging innkeeper. In fact, there was no inn at all, and you'll see why. 
And nowadays, families might stay in hotels like my in-laws this year. They're coming down to Sears. They're going to stay in a hotel. But in Israel at the time, back then, family stayed with family, especially pregnant family members. But not in Israel. All would stay with family due to the census. Many of would have been traveling home like Christmas and would have been staying with the family. Room, there would have been tight. Space would have been short, but they would have been together. Now, especially space for giving birth would have been tight. So take my parents home, for example. There's my mum and dad. There's myself, Zoe, our three children. There's my brother and sister-in-law and their new child. There's my sister and brother-in-law and their three children. There's my older brother, his dog. And I think you could imagine if Zoe was pregnant, the first place that she would go is to the garage to give birth. She's not going to give birth in the house. And this is where the quiet peace of the garage would come into it. So perhaps more importantly, the Greek word for the Bible renders in Cataluna. This doesn't mean what we think in the modern English. Tradition has obscured the meaning here. Instead of in, the word actually means guest room. In fact, you'll find exactly the same word used in the way in Luke 22 and Mark 14, 14. And then consistent with that, the NIV in 2011 updated to say, because there was no guest room available for them. So rather than being turned away from hotels, Joseph found his relative's house filled with guests who were probably there for the census. The couple didn't face closed doors. They just had to live in the lower levels of the house, a place often accustomed to animals in ancient Israel. So all of these layers have been added, but I think the true meaning of Christmas, what really happened is nothing short of outstanding. God came down. God with us, the mystery. Let me read from Matthew 1, 18 to 25. Now the birth of Jesus took place in this way, when his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph. Before they came together, she found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus, for he will save the people, for he will save his people from their sins. All of this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear her son, and they shall call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. And then when Joseph awoke from the sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded, took his wife, but he knew her not until she had given birth to a son. They called him Jesus. Jesus stepped into our world, a gift from God. When he was conceived in Mary by the Holy Spirit, Jesus willingly took on flesh, fully aware of how his life would turn around. He knew he'd be in danger from childhood. He knew he'd be mocked and harassed. He knew he'd be beaten, flogged and crucified. Even still, he chose to be born. But why? The answer is love. At this time, at this Christmas time, we can look around and see many things in the world, the, the, the hatred, the wars, the, the try and escape. Maybe there's situations in your lives and we try and escape and have these bungee cords pull us back in. But it wasn't always meant to be like that. In God's world, the perfect world, Jesus came to our world. He died on the cross. He rose again three days later. And if you make Jesus the king of your life, you will be raised up with him. And let me read you this, a well-known verse. 
about love. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Love makes humans do some pretty amazing things. You've probably got your own stories, but God has us all beat. He humbled himself to become one of us. And then he died on purpose for you. He died on purpose to take away our sins. He died, we lived. So when the Christmas trees sparkle, and you're having that time with the family, I pray that you remember the true reason for the season, that Jesus came down to, uh, was born the Holy Spirit, died for your sins. If you'd like to find out more about Jesus, about the, the true meaning of Christmas, then please make a comment in the chat Get in touch with us. We're great to talk it through with you. Let me pray to close. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the love that you have shown to us. Lord, the love of sending your one and only Son to live, to die, that we may be saved. Lord, I pray that each of us will remember the reason for the season. In your name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
I do pray you have a great Christmas. Spend time with your families, your loved ones, or however you're going to spend it. Please do stay in touch. Thank you.